Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bells again. How are you doing today? Um, hoping to uh, try and get you a, a few different things on this stuff. Uh, the problems that are going to go with this, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, that it's not like I can just show you one example and all of a sudden it's going to work for you. Um, but the goal for today is simplifying and solving with trig identity. So I'm going to run through a few of these ones. Um, that uh, 1 over sine theta is equal to cosecant theta. These are reciprocal functions. Um, so if I simply took the sine theta and I moved it upstairs, it would equal cosecant. If I moved the cosine theta upstairs, it would equal secant theta. Um, just like these ones, tangent theta is sine over cosine, and cotangent theta is cosine over sine, which means, of course, tangent theta is 1 over cotangent, and cotangent theta is equal to 1 over tangent. So those are all the... Uh, um, but we're, I'm going to call the reciprocal ones, reciprocal uh, identities. Uh, the Pythagorean are identities, uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared theta, 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. And then these ones down here, that the sine of the opposite of x is equal to the negative sine of x, that the cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x, uh, which means it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative, a 30 degree angle or a negative 30 degree angle is going to be the same value. And the tangent of a negative x is equal to negative tangent x. So I know that in trig class, you guys did lots of different identities, and there were some crazy looking stuff. Uh, in pre-calc, um, moving into calculus, we're going to deal with these ones a lot. And the goal is to get really comfortable with them get really comfortable um, and I'm going to try and just show you a few different problems right now uh, so if you don't have this list copied down someplace you probably want to have that list copied down uh, someplace it'll be much easier for you to be able to uh, um, work with this stuff so if you want to pause the video and just kind of write those down that'd be awesome okay so I'm going to go through just a bunch of different problems and kind of try and point out some of the things that they're uh, we'd be looking for. So uh, let's start with some basic stuff. So let's say I said that uh, tangent theta is equal to two thirds and I wanted you to find sine theta and cosine theta. Um, could you do that? Well hopefully that you would know and you just kind of go like this. Uh, go ahead and put theta right there and if tangent theta is opposite over adjacent then I'd know my opposite is two and my adjacent is uh, three, so it'd be just like that. There's my right triangle, and uh, then I could use Pythagorean theorem to be able to get the hypotenuse. So three squared is nine, two squared is four, so nine, four is thirteen. So I know that this is the square root of thirteen. So if I wanted to find sine theta, uh, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so sine theta would equal two over root thirteen, um, which would be two root. 13 over 13, and cosine theta uh, would equal adjacent over hypotenuse, so that'd be 3 over root 13, which of course we multiply top and bottom by root 13 because we don't want to have radicals downstairs. We're left with 3 root 13 over 13. So basically, if I give you any of these things, can you find out the other ones? And I know we practiced this, but uh, one of the problems in this homework, this is this is from section 5-1. Um, one of the problems in the homework starts off with this, so I want to make sure that you're okay. Okay, so uh, one of the big things that we're going to try and do is we're going to try and simplify uh, lots of different expressions. Well, they're going to get from really basic to really complicated, but our goal is, again, to think about these things right here. Can I do that? Okay, so let's try something that's pretty okay. So let's uh, say this first example problem is uh, cotangent x sine x. And I said, hey, well, what is that? Uh, what's that equivalent to? Well, we know right over here that cotangent is cosine over sine. So I could rewrite this as cosine x over sine x times sine x. And then we know that sine x kills sine x. So we know that this simplifies down to cosine x. So there's some basic stuff that we could do just like that. Uh, and then what if we have some uh, some more complicated ones? So let's say we got uh, this one. Let's say we have uh, cosine of negative x. Um, 
times a tangent of negative x. And we're like, well, how does that simplify to? I'm like, I don't know, let's try some stuff. So we know that tan right up here is equivalent to sine over cosine. So that's cosine negative x, right? Uh, sine negative x over cosine negative x. Um, because tangent is sine over cosine, I can write that. Oh, look, that tells that. We're left with sine of negative x. Well, we know that sine of negative x right here is also equivalent to the negative of sine of x. So final answer, negative sine of x. Uh, so problems like that. And again, some real basic things. It's just showing you that uh, some of these things work with it. Uh, so let's say that we had something that was a little bit more complicated right now. Let's try this one over here. And um, it could be, uh, there's only so many different problems that the, the textbook can throw out there. It could be that some of the things that I do right now are actually ones that show up in your stuff. Uh, so let's try this one. So let's say tan x over secant squared x plus tan x over cosecant squared x. Uh, let's say I had something like this. Well, I'm trying to trying to simplify this. Now, the one thing I want to point out is that we could do um, we could do these a lot of different ways um, because uh, I think I've referred to this before. There's a lot of different ways to get to Myers. Um, you can take Gold Road. You can go 32nd Street to G Avenue. You could even run all the way through Dalton and back down uh, across to Plainwell and then down. Um, 131 into Kalamazoo and bring Kalamazoo back up to Myers on Co Road. That's the way these simplifications and identities go sometimes. Sometimes you work stuff out good, sometimes it's like maybe not so good. So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and one of the key rules is to try and move things into sines and cosines. I think you guys remember that from trick. So secant squared x, if I move that upstairs, I'm pretty sure that's cosine squared x. Isn't that good like that? Plus, and then I'm going to move this one upstairs, just like this. And that, of course, is sine squared x. So now i got tangent x, cosine squared x plus tangent x, sine squared x. And you're like, whoa, wait. So it's a, what's that rule called? Factoring, factoring. Awesome. So it's got tans on both of these things. So let's go ahead and rip that out. And if I pull a tan x out of both of these things, uh, then I get cosine squared x plus sine squared x with that tan on the outside You're like oh hey look that's one of these things cosine squared plus sine squared doesn't matter which one comes first it's just addition three plus four or four plus three still uh, works out for us okay so that's one so this is simply uh, tangent of x sweet so this big thing right here simplified down to this expression right here and that's kind of some of the things that we're going to do. We're just going to play around with these things and go, hey, can I take something big and messy looking and use some of these rules up here that I've got, use some of these rules and go, can I make it look neater, simpler, more basic? And if I can do that, then that's awesome. So uh, one of the things that I did on this one was simply move stuff up, right? Um, the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, and you guys are going to see this, and hopefully this is okay, uh, is I'm going to use some algebra properties. So i got 1 over uh, cosine x plus 1, like this, and then i got a minus, i got 1 over cosine x minus 1, and uh, my goal is can I make this thing a lot smaller? Can I simplify it down to something that's a little bit tinier? Well, um, you can see that these don't have the same denominators, and I can't just move, like I can't move this cosine up, uh, this cosine x up here right now, and call it secant x. can't do that because it's attached with 1, and those are two different terms. Like here, I could move this up. That was okay. Here, I, I can't necessarily do that. But what I can do is something that's really helpful in algebra, is when I have two separate fractions here, separated by a plus or minus sign, uh, is I can do something called crisscross smiley face. And crisscross smiley face means that I'm going to uh, get a common denominator with you. So Chris means multiply one side down to here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and attach this negative. I'm going to make this a plus sign. 
and then I'm going to make this a negative and this a positive right now. So I'm going to distribute the negative down to the denominator. I'm going to attach it to the bigger stuff right now. And I'm going to go ahead and do this multiplication. So uh, Chris in here, I get negative uh, cosine x, and then 1 times 1 is 1, so plus 1. And then cross, uh, just like this, I do that. Uh, and then I get um, 1 times cosine x, which is cosine x. Awesome. And then uh, 1 times 1 is 1, so another plus 1. So that's Chris and cross, and that's the top. Uh, smiley face means I hook these two things together on the bottom. So cosine x times negative cosine x is negative cosine squared x. And then uh, you can see this uh, outside. Is that, that's one, positive cosine x. Awesome. And this inside is negative cosine x. And then the last one times one is one. Sweet. Just like that. Okay, so I feel like I can simplify a whole bunch of this stuff down. So I look up here in the top, and I got a negative cosine x, and I got a cosine x. Ooh, those two things cancel each other out, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Down here on the bottom, uh, I got a positive cosine x and a negative cosine x. And it looks like I got a negative cosine x squared x plus 1. Well, if I look back up here at my Pythagorean identity right here, if I uh, just subtract the cosine squared x to the other side, then I know that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. Oh, that's 1 and a minus cosine squared. So if I combine these two things together, uh, that becomes sine squared theta. I'm like, okay, so I got this, but now they're on two levels, so can I simplify it even more? I'm like, sure, let's go ahead and move sine squared upstairs because now it doesn't have a separate term with them, a plus or anything else like that with it. Move sine squared upstairs, and that becomes cosecant squared. So this becomes 2 cosecant squared theta. And now I've simplified that all the way down into that one uh, special part. Okay? Uh, so let's try another one right here. And... Uh, um, Try a little different application with some of these things. And again, that was one of the rules. So crisscross smiley face is one possible way uh, that you can do that. Okay, so well, let's try another one here. Let's do cosecant x over cosine x and minus uh, cosine x over uh, sine x. You know, like, hmm. So uh, one of the things that I could do, uh, I could do crisscross my other face, uh, but I already showed you that application. So let's try something different and see if this works out for you. So this time I'm going to try and say, let's go ahead and move this cosecant down. If I move cosecant down, that's a sine. So then I've got 1 over cosine x sine x minus uh, cosine x over sine x. And you're looking at this going, hey, I wish I could get common denominators here. Now, you can see on this left side, I got a cosine and a sine. And this right side, I only got a sine. And you're like, hmm, what is this guy missing? What can I put? What can I put right there to make those two things have equal bottoms? Well, it would be a cosine x. So let's just randomly throw a cosine x down there. And some of you are going, Mr. Bellas, you can't just randomly throw something in the denominator. And I go, of course not. But if I put a cosine x upstairs also, then I've really just multiplied this fraction by 1, cosine x over cosine x is 1. Um, so now, if you guys see this, my new numerator across the board here is 1 minus cosine squared x, and my new denominator is cosine x sine x, because they have the same thing. Okay, uh, so now, ooh, well, 1 minus cosine squared x, I think that's sine squared x, right? We just showed that on the Pythagorean identities over cosine x sine x. And then, hey, look, there's one of those upstairs and one of those downstairs, so that's going to kill one. So now I got sine x over cosine x. And then I'm like, wait, let's go back to this thing, this little paper over here, and sine over cosine is tangent theta. 
so tangent x. Isn't that crazy? This weird looking expression right here is equivalent to tangent. And again, that's kind of what we're doing through a bunch of these things. Okay, so that's the first part of 5.1. It's can you simplify some things. And again, just try. Just try. Just make sure, do your best to make sure that you're not making up new algebra rules. Okay? Because uh, those those are things that we've learned all along and you can't, you can't just make stuff up. Um, so let's try something else. Uh, let's try one of these ones. Let's do a cosine squared x um, plus 2 cosine x plus 1. And I'm going to ask you, uh, we know how to factor. Um, can we factor with trigonometric identities or trigonometric expressions and problems? And the answer is yes. We can do that. And I don't want you to think that we can't. So let's see if this works out. So what gives you cosine squared x? Well, the only way you can do that is a cosine x and a cosine x. And you're like, okay, I can do that. Well, what gets you factors of 1? Well, the only factors of 1 are 1 and 1. So I put that there and I put that there. And how do I get 2 cosine x? Well, in the middle I've got a 1 cosine x, and on the outside I've got a 1 cosine x. And it looks like I got that. So this thing factors into cosine x plus 1 quantity squared. It happens to be a, what do we call it? A perfect square. Okay. So let's look at something a little bit more complicated and see if we can do something with this one. Let's do 1 minus 2 cosine x plus 1 minus sine squared x. Uh, so I got this big expression here and I'm like, hmm, what can I do with this thing? So I'm like, Boy, if I'm trying to do factoring, I probably want to have uh, maybe the same signs. That's a possibility. Same signs in here. So I'm like, ooh, well, 1 minus sine squared x isn't that cosine squared x. So then I can write 1 minus 2 cosine x plus cosine squared x. I'm like, oh, that's a perfect square, and that's a perfect square. Huh. I wonder if this just means that I can do it as 1 minus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x. Let's try it. So 1 times 1 is 1. That's that one. Uh, outside is negative cosine x. Inside is negative cosine x. That's negative co cosine x's. And then negative cosine x times negative cosine x. Negative times negative is positive. Cosine times cosine is cosine. Look at that. It worked. 1 minus cosine squared. Uh, oh, sorry. 1 minus cosine x squared. Two completely different things. Don't put the little square on that one. Um, and that's it. That's uh, an example of factoring that. So why do we want to factor some of these things? Why is it uh, beneficial? And how does it work out on some of these things? So uh, what we're going to do is this. Let's see if this uh, makes sense for you. I uh, don't have a, a ton more in this thing. Because again, you've got to try it. And I might write stuff down here and you might look at it and go, how does he do that? Hey, sometimes you just play around. Sometimes you just play around. And we might do that for the, the very last problem here. So let's try something like this. So cosine squared x over 1 minus uh, sine x. We're like, hmm, what can I do with that? Uh, so let's see if we can do some things. So I believe... Um, can I just move this sine x up? Why don't you give that a shot? Can you do that? Can you? Can you? Hopefully you all said no. Hey, you can't do that. Uh, I can't do that because this is one minus. This is two separate terms and I can't just move one of the two terms up. Uh, but I can change cosine squared x. Uh, that's Pythagorean identity. That's one minus sine squared x over one minus sine x. And then, uh, wait. That's a perfect square, that's a perfect square, that's a subtraction sign in the middle, so we can do a difference of squares. So that should be 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x. You see how that worked out? Um, again, this is no different than if I factored x squared minus 9 into x minus 3 and x plus 3. It's just a difference of perfect squares. We've been doing that for a long time. So kill that and kill that. And I know that this simplifies to 1 plus sine 
effects. Okay. Uh, so how do uh, how do I work out some things if I got an actual equation now? So I'm going to make an equation and go, hey, can I solve this? So tan squared x uh, equals, let's say it equals one third. And you're like, where the heck does tangent squared x equal one third? Well, we know we could go to our handy dandy calculator, right? And we could go uh, y equals, and this one's left over from before here and here, and we could do uh, tan squared x. Remember last time we said it, we do it like this, tan x. Uh, the square has to go on the outside. That's what tan squared x actually looks like. And we want it to equal one-third, one-third. And let's go, say, just between zero and pi. So on my window, um, I'm going to go from zero to, or zero to two pi. So two pi, and then my y min, uh, zero, and my y max one. And go ahead and hit graph. You're like, okay, so this is the tangent function in that window. So it looks like, holy crap, looks like I have one, two, three, four different solutions that I've got to find between 0 and 2 pi. So the question is, I, I of course could just do intersections in those four different places. Let's see if I can do those algebraically with some understanding here. So let's go first. So I'm going to square root both sides. So that means tan x equals plus or minus, because I'm square rooting, right? And then the square root of 1 over the square root of 3. I can't have the radical down there, so that's root 3 over 3. I'm like, okay, so what does that look like? Uh, so on my 30, 60, 90 triangles, do I ever have that? Uh, well, if I had this one right here as a... 2 root 3, then this would be half of it, right, on a 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30, 60, 90 triangle. So half of 2 root 3 is root 3. And then if I multiply the short leg by root 3, the square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. So then if I look at this angle right here, 30 degrees, I can see that the opposite over the adjacent would be square root of 3 over 3. And you're like, yes, that works out. So I need to know... Um, that right there is uh, that angle, so sweet. So I know that the tangent of 30 degrees works, so where else uh, Where else am I gonna get that? So let's draw a little thing down here. So 30 degrees there, and 30 degrees there, and 30 degrees there, and 30 degrees there. So uh, by measurement angles, I got 30, I got 150, I got uh, 200 and 10, and I got 300. And if I wanted uh, radians, looks like I got a pi over 6. I got 5 pi's over 6. I got 7 pi's over 6, and I got 11 pi's over 6. And you guys can uh, pull up your unit circles. You guys should be pretty good at that. I'm hoping uh, to know all those different things. Um, so those are all those angles right in there there, there, and there, because uh, those are all just uh, uh, reference angles for a 30 degree in those different places. Okay, uh, so I don't know, let's check, let's see what I got here. Uh, oop, graph again. So second trace, number five, intersection, enter, enter, enter. Uh, it shows me one right here at 3.66. 3.66, you're like, ugh, well, that's not a very good thing. Well, what is that? Well, let's quit that out. We thought it was the third one over there, so let's try this. What is 7 pi divided by 6? That's one of the ones we said. And look at that, 3.66. So those are all those ones. If you wanted to change your mode, um, I'll show you to this really quick. Change your mode to degrees, just like that. Go to your window, uh, 0 to 360 degrees, and hit graph. Now you're going to see the exact same picture that we showed before. And there's our one third going through. And then second trace, number five, intersection. I'm going to go ahead and move it to this one. And we know that according to our thing, that should be 150 degrees, right? Enter, enter, enter. And you can see you gotta look really close, but there it is. 
150. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's leave you with one. Um, uh, I don't know. Kind of kind of scary thing. Here we go. So let's do sine squared theta minus three sine theta equals nothing. And I'm trying to solve this equation. That last equation that was pretty pretty easy. Uh, it's got a lot of steps to it, but uh, pretty easy in terms of the math. So one of the first things I can do right here is I can, oh, looks like I can factor a sine out. So uh, I'll pull a sine theta out of both of these and I get a sine theta minus three equals zero. Um, so now technically I have something times something equals zero, which means either this equals zero, sine theta equals zero, or sine theta minus three equals zero. Well, where does sine equal zero? We know that a sine function starts right here, right? And goes up and down and back up again. That's the that's the normal um, path for a sine function. So sine theta equals zero at right there, zero. At right there, 180 degrees or pi. Right there again at 360 degrees or two pi. And it keeps repeating uh, those so technically what you can write is n pi for a solution to that where n uh, is an integer an integer that means n can be 1 or 2 or negative 3 or negative 17 or 54 billion if you wanted it to where n's an integer okay so now let's try in the next one where are the other solutions so where does sine theta Minus 3 equals 0. Well, let's just move the 3 over and sine theta equals 3. Well, this is 1. This is negative 1. 3 is like right up here. So where does this little wave right down here touch that line way up there? What? What'd you say? Right. It doesn't. It doesn't ever touch it. Uh, so that's what that would look like. And uh, we just say that's no solution on that one. Okay. So, um, I'm going to throw one more out here. I know, stay with me on this stuff. Because um, this one's a little bit sketchier. It's a little bit tougher on this one. So let's try something like this. 4 cosine squared x minus 4 root 2 cosine x plus 2 equals 0. Let's say I had a big, scary-looking uh, equation like this. I'm like, solve this. Well, yes, you could take this and put it into your calculator and, and find out where these two things intersect. Remember, this is not the same graph. Or you go, hey, I trust my algebra skills. I'm going to see if this is factorable. Um, so let's give it a shot. Uh, factors of 4 cosine squared x. Well, I'm thinking that would be a 2 cosine x. And a 2 cosine x. Maybe. Does 2 cosine x times 2 cosine x equal 4 cosine squared x? It sure does. Now what equals 2? Well, I know 1 and 2 equal 2, but you can see right here I have a square root of 2. Well, that means that things have to multiply together to give me a square root of 2. So what if I did this? Minus root 2 and minus root 2. And then... Uh, Hopefully, does that work out? Let's try this. So 2 cosine x times 2 cosine x is 4 cosine squared x. Outside is negative 2 root 2 cosine x. Inside is negative 2 root 2 cosine x, which is totaled negative 4 root 2 cosine x. Well, that's good. What's a negative times a negative? Positive. Root 2 times root 2? That's a real 2. That's what this equals. Sweet. So this does factor into this. Awesome. So which means I need to solve this equation. 2 cosine x minus root 2 equals 0. Um, I don't need to solve this one because they are the same. So let's try it. Uh, just do my basic algebra skills. I'll move that over there. So now I get 2 uh, cosine x equals root 2. And then divide by 2 and divide by 2 and cosine x equals root 2 over 2. Well, root 2 over 2, that's one of them 45, 45, 90 triangles, right? 
45, 45, 90 triangles. And uh, this is root 2, and this is uh, root 2. Uh, and uh, that works out. Or if you want, I can just do it like this too. 1, 1, and root 2. Uh, that's what you see most of the time. But let's try it. Uh, so cosine of a 45, that's adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 1 over root 2, right? Which equals, multiply top and bottom by root 2, because you can't have radical downstairs, equals root 2 over 2. And you're like, hey, it does work out, so 45 degrees. So 45 degrees, there's one of my solutions. But this is where it's positive, right? Positive, so I know that it happens someplace else. Where else does it happen um, besides a 45 degree angle here, that equals root 2 over 2? Uh, a, S, T, C, positive cosine. Uh, po all of them are positive here. Sine's only positive in this uh, realm. Tangent's only positive in this realm. And cosine is positive still over here. So it looks like I got 45 and 315 degrees. And again, see if this makes sense to you. Uh, if I was to draw this little triangle right in here, this length is positive, this length is negative. Hypotenuse is always positive. So if we're looking at adjacent over hypotenuse, uh, adjacent over hypotenuse or theta, that's positive over positive. That's why it's positive for this thing. So 45 and 315, or pi over 4 and 7 pi's over 4. So that's it. That's what a lot of this stuff looks like. Uh, again, there's no shortcut in here. There's no uh, special things. Um, think about factoring. Uh, think about criss cross smiley face. Uh, think about your special right triangles, your 30, 60, 90, or 45. 45, 90 triangles, and then know your identities. All of these things help out with this. Um, as you know, uh, I made it so you can try these problems as many times as you want. Again, continued success with this um, as you work through it. Good deal. So uh, that's Mr. Bells. Uh, hopefully you have a uh, great day and Better day than uh, outside here today. Uh, kind of rainy, kind of yucky. I will tell you that I'm out for now, and uh, you guys take care. Bye.